Hi everybody, this is Tenacious Earl, and this is Tabletop Baseball Plus YouTube channel. Um, my hope is here to provide you with a partly tutorial, partly playthrough of how I set up and play one of my Ninacious Football League games using Second Season. Second Season is a football simulation to play on the tabletop. It's created by Play Games. Keith does a great job with his games. Um, they're usually um, quite detailed and um, you know just uh, has a, a little bit of a different mechanism. It works really well for um, actually fictitious teams, but also for teams in real life that you can get and replay or simulate. But um, if you want to get this game, you can order it at the URL HTTP colon backslash backslash www.plaay.com play with two a's dot com and um it's got plenty of seasons there to choose from uh and what we're going to do here so just a little preface i do this using the nine uh league um because it's nine teams it's an odd number there needs to be buys so you have, um, what I try to do is I try to use uh, the team, the number of games they've played. So the next game would be, like in this case, Tennessee will be game seven. I try to use their seventh game and their usage. You'll see this in a bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and show you how I determine player usage for each game and all that. So we're going to get right into it here with some information on how I set up my teams here in uh, to be to play second season for the Tennessee Titans at the Chicago Bears week eight of the nine Asius football league the 2016 season and um, I'm going to go to my drive and in my drive I have uh, the football league here and so what you can see is we've got teams we have nine teams. They've each played a different number of games because it's just the way it is. We've got nine teams. We need to have a bye. And I kind of set it up the schedule up in a way that it wasn't really balanced as far as when teams got their two buys. So that's why you've got Kansas City and Baltimore have played eight games, and you've got Tennessee and Miami who've only played six. So what what does this mean? So it means that if I'm going to play Tennessee and Chicago, what I want to be doing is I want to use the lineup that would be found from Tennessee's seventh game and Chicago's eighth game of the season. That's how I'm, I'm doing this. You know, I, I want to, you know, that's to our best of our ability. Now, it's is that perfect? No. I mean, maybe if Tennessee was playing Chicago in 2016 in real life, they would have chosen different personnel than what they chose against whoever they played. Now I can come over here to, I can open up a new window and go to PF ref, which is profootballreference.com is a great resource for all of this stuff. And here you can see, let's just say, um, well, two things. One, I haven't really had any, uh, haven't really said it too much since it happened, but Kobe Bryant, rest in peace, tragic, tragic death over this past weekend. I know it's been a, almost a week since it's happened and still has affected so many people. He was such a great, great basketball player. Uh, we don't really play a whole lot of basketball here on the channel, but in any regards, hate to ignore that. But also here, let's see Chris Dolman recently uh, passed away as well. So rest in peace and condolences to Vikings fans and all of his uh, family and, and friends and, and such. Um, anybody who remembers him and his prowess as a pass rusher uh, will just know that he was a, uh, a beast. So, um, and it always sucks to have to say was for anybody. But, um, yeah, rest in peace, Chris Dolman and Kobe Bryant. But um, getting back to what the video here is about. Um, 
what we need to do is we need to go to 2016 season. So you can see if you go to the seasons tab here at Pro Football Reference, uh, you have a couple seasons. You can go right here to what says all seasons. So if you're playing one that's a historic set, you could go way back to the 70s or whatever. But we're going to go to 2016 right here. I'm going to click 2016 NFL. It's going to give us the NFL standing so we will be able to get to uh, Tennessee right here. And then what we're going to be looking for is which game we need. And we remember we said that we needed their seventh game of the season. And so you also have to take into account if they had played a bye. You wouldn't just go to week seven necessarily. In the case of Tennessee, they do have the Colts as their seventh game. So what we would do is we would need to find... Um, now, you can find a lot of these stats here. I do, down at the bottom of this page, um, about, wait, where is it? Oh, I didn't go to the box score. If you go to the box score at Pro Football Reference, you'll get a big part of what I'm looking for, but you'll miss some things. And so I prefer the... Um, the game books at nfl.com because it has some other interesting information but if you can as you can see here if you go actually about halfway down the page you get to the snap counts this is one of the things i'm going to be looking for but um you're not going to be able to see it here i, I have to go into an excel spreadsheet i have which get, has all of the urls for the game books from the 2016 season thank you to glenn bone steel for providing this to me, this has been a real source of data mining for me. It saved me time to be able to go. But uh, So I can just open up a new window. I've got this link right here. I'm going to go paste and go. And it's going to take me right to the game book, Tennessee hosting Indianapolis. As you can see, Pro Football Reference has the home team on the left and the away team on the right. For the game books here, it's the other way around. Tennessee is the home team and they're on the um, the right. Now, where is my zoom? I want to zoom in here. So, the first bit of information that I like to start with is this section. Um, let's see, do I have... I guess I don't have a highlighter available in this. Um, this section that's right here that says not active. Also, can be helpful to have the starters up here on offense and defense, but I really like to start with who is not active. And what I can do here, um, I'm going to turn my camera down. I've already done a lot of this work ahead of time, so just bear with me as I kind of show you here on this screen that you can see I have some lines crossed off here. These are guys that if you look back here on the web page or on the on this PDF like you have Harry Douglas the wide receiver 83 Harry Douglas so if you if we go back over here Harry Douglas is this guy right here he's a wide receiver he's like the second one listed in end a and so I cross them I cross all of the not active players. I cross them all off right off the bat. Another thing you can do is, uh, and where did I find that? Um, another potential resource for you, if we go, let's go back here. This is again on Pro Football Reference. Um, where what, am I? I think it's Injury Report. And you can come right down here and you can see anybody who is on Injured Reserve. So you might be able to, like, Chance Warmack, although he was in, he, he's not on the sheet but um, itself, but he was in sort of the extras. But you can see here, you can get anybody who happens to be um, a part of things and got on the IR. Like, at the end of the season, we've got Carl Klug, um, who is a, a defensive end, uh, He's going to be on IR the last two games. So you can kind of come here for some supplemental information. Because sometimes when they're on the IR, or definitely when they're on the IR, they're not going to be listed as inactive on the game book here. So you might be able to get a couple of other 
names crossed off your list. Okay. So then the next thing I like to do is I like to go down here and I like to go to my punt returns and kickoff returns and see who has done the punts and the kickoffs for these teams. For Tennessee, it's Mark Mariani who did both. He had, had one punt return and one kickoff return and the rest were touchbacks or out of bounds. And so um, if, you, if we go back over to my camera and I am going to take a second here to zoom in a bit. I'm going to move this down and show you the top of the page and it will just show up a little bit better if I do this. I could I put little dots next to guys that are sort of like absolute. So Mark Mariani is up here in the return and he's under kickoff return and punt return. So I I select him for both of those. Now we're gonna get to the to why I like using the play counts and the percentages. So Let's come down here. I'm scrolling down through all of the play, you know, it's got the play by play and whatever. So now we get to the play chart. So first off, we've got the offense and you've got five players here, really six almost, who played 100% of the offensive snaps. Usually you're going to have your offensive linemen in this unless they get injured. So you've got Taylor Lewan, um, You've got uh, Jack Conklin, Josh Klein, Marcus Mariota, the quarterback's usually found, found there, again, unless they got hurt, and Ben Jones, the center. So those guys all played 100%. I put, let me go back to this other screen, I slap circles on them, right? So then what? Let's go back to this screen here. And where is our guard well it, we have listed here uh and we can go back to the top and see that quentin spain was the left guard that started the game and then if we go back down to the play percentages quentin spain only played 26 percent of the snaps while uh let's see you had ben schwenke or brian schwenke excuse me playing 74 percent which to me which uh, you can then sort of use. You could you could probably do a little bit of searching on either ESPN or whatever, and you could find like the game report and find out that maybe Spain got hurt. I'm assuming Spain got hurt here, and because he played 26% of the snaps, my assumption is going to be that he played the first quarter only. And so as you can see here, I've made a little mark right there. It says Quentin Spain one Q, and then next to Brian Schwenke, it's two to four. Now, why do I do this? As you can see here, Quentin Spain is a one pass and a one plus run. Now, what the one plus means, we're going to start getting into a little bit of the game mechanics. If there's a plus next to one of these global pass or run ratings, it means when the team advances to plus territory, their rating goes up. So if it's a one plus, they become a two when they go past the 50 yard line into the other team's territory. If it's a minus, then they get downgraded. So if Quentin Spain was a one minus, he would go from being a one to a zero when you were in opponent's territory. So that's going to make an effect here because Schwenke is a zero run. So in the second, third, and fourth quarter, you're going to have some plays that happen where if you get checked for the guard A, they're not going to be as effective as they would be if they had Spain playing the whole game. And I try to honor these things. Now, you'll see some other markings there. What do those mean? Let's get back to this screen and take a look what those mean. Um, so you've got DeMarco Murray. If you saw that, he had a dot next to him. He played 96% of the snaps. So as far as I'm concerned, because of the mechanics I use, unless an injury comes up during the game, I'm going to use him exclusively as the FB, which is more or less the running back position for most of the teams as they're carded in this game. So DeMarco Murray is going to be the running back in every formation. What we could do is we could, you see down there at the bottom, Henry plays an eight. We could use Henry for short yardage. He is a better inside runner. And 
seeing what he did in the playoffs this year, you could see why he might be better off in short yardage. I may even do that. I, I haven't decided. You're, you have very few short yardage opportunities, but that would be a potential rectification. I think I'm not going to do that because I, th this is what I had planned before. So I have a dot next to Murray. Next on the list is Tajay Sharp. He played 84%. I'm going to go back over to the team sheet and show you that what I have listed there is a five. So the way that I do my, um, what I use is I use a formations based chart. I create them on index cards and the formations are based on six roll, the six faces of a D6 as well as short yardage and long yardage. So I will create six different normal formations that would just go off of the D6 roll. And then I would have a short yardage and a long yardage. If it's a long yardage, it, I would probably still roll the, the die for the personnel, but I would just ignore it and just stick with the long yardage formation. Or if it's like third and one, I would then use short yardage personnel. So, as we said, we had Tajay Sharp over 80%. I'm going to use him as a 5 out of 6. You can see right here, it's a, I have a 5. Now, and let's just go, I'm going to get back here to this page, and let's go through the rest of these before I talk about how I do the others. You have um, Delaney Walker is 74%. It, it gets tough when you get to sort of the in-between. So 74 is kind of like halfway between 4 of 6 and 5 of 6. So I kind of go with my gut. And in that case, because Delaney Walker is pretty influential, I'm going to use him 5 out of 6 as well. Um, excuse me as I take a drink. You then have Richard Matthews, another wide receiver. He's actually in the A, in a column. 67%. That's four out of six, easy to do. Then you get Kendall Wright. So usually what the way it should work out is you should get at least 10 that are above 50%. You had Luan up here, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You get 11 with Kendall Wright. So Kendall Wright is half. Now what you will sometimes find is that you end up with... Um, and actually, hang on a second. I think I, I'm, I'm going to make an adjustment to this because I, I messed this up a little bit. Um, yeah, so I wrote, so, so we have Kendall Wright at 51%. Let's go back to the team sheet. Kendall Wright shows up in a couple different spots. He's a wide receiver, but in modern offenses, you're what's called the SB on, on two teams in this game, Baltimore and and um, I forget if I think it's Kansas City. They actually use the FB as a tight end and the SB as a running back. But in this case, SB is sort of like your. It can mold between. Uh, you could have some formations. You would have a tight end. Some formations you have a wide receiver. Some formations you have a fullback. And uh, give me a moment here. I'm gonna make one little adjustment because with the way this is going I think I can use autofocus that I don't often use on these things let's see uh, it's still it's kind of weird I don't know why it does this I'm gonna turn it off looks like it's heart beating it's kind of creepy all right um, let's see if I can sharpen this up just a tad Uh, let's see. Now we're just gonna have to leave it as, as it is. Okay, so we we said Kendall Wright has fifty percent. I'm gonna erase this one here for Fasano. So. Kendall Wright can be a wide receiver in the SB column in two of those. Well, 
actually more than that. But what I'm going to do is because he's played 50%, that's three. I'm going to split him two in this column and one to match up with Tajay Sharp. So he's going to he's going to relieve Tajay Sharp one out of the six of those. And then two out of the six, he's going to be over here. Um, so then we can go back to this and we can see that Andre Johnson is at 34%. He's the next one. And you had Richard Matthews at 67 and Johnson 34. So it's roughly a two to one mixture. So what we can do is we can put two down next to Johnson. Now, if you notice here, Johnson was not particularly productive in this season. He has the designation of his R designation is with parentheses. He can only catch one ball before his R, he gets ruled out for R's. So, uh, but still, he's going to be playing two of those formations. That's how we're going to set that up. That's how I do that. Let's go back to the screen and kind of finish this up with Supernaw. He played 26. Again, that's sort of halfway between one and two. We're going to give him one to go off of Delaney Walker's five since they're both tight ends. So then you... you oh, I, I missed Anthony Fasano. Now, Fasano is at, at 32, which is a two... So, again, what we could also do is here... Actually, I'm going to make a change. Let's make a change here. I like the idea of having one running formation with Fasano. So let's instead have Kendall Wright be three of these. Fasano be one in the fullback position there, and there's going to be one formation where he takes over for Tajay Sharp in uh, as sort of a... Because uh, as you can see, Tajay Sharp is a one pass, zero run guy. So... And then what, what do we have left here? To, we, we, we have two more in the SB column to, to sort of sort out there for the offense. And um, for those, we've got... Uh, so, in, in Supernaw... Actually, Delaney Walker was five, and Supernaw is, again, ha kind of halfway between uh, one and two. I'm going to make him two, but I'm going to use him once in the SB, and I'm going to use Jalston Fowler, who is a fullback, um, to also be in that SB column, so then we we sort of will have a an interesting flavor. Uh, you the tough part is when you try to run out of it when you put Kendall Wright in there because he is a zero run guy. But sometimes you're going to try to run off of a formation that is geared towards pass, right? So um, then what we do is we do the same thing for the defense. And I'm going to shove this down and I'll. Um, I just want to make sure that... So, what you can see here is you have a bunch of letters for this. I'm not going to necessarily go through all of the the numbers because it gets a little... It, gets a little, uh, it can get a little intimidating there. But what I try to do is I try to find anybody who is 90% or more. In this case, and a lot of teams, you get all of the defensive backs that way. And you get maybe one or two linebackers who are pretty much every down. Uh, and a lot of times, the, the, the it's really maybe even... You may even get five defensive backs who are almost 90% because today's offenses are much more geared to the pass. But in the case of Tennessee here, we only had Jason McCourty uh, as the only guy. Now, I didn't look up injuries. It could be that there were injuries, but what I did was... What I like to do is I like to cut things up based on either pass, safe, run, or blitz. These are your defenses that are going to be called in second season. And so I try to gear things based on the percentages that seem to make sense if you cut things up. So like in, in the case of the free safety year, you got Kevin Byard. He was only about 30% of the time. I'm going to use him in the pass defense mostly because Rashad Johnson um, is not quite as strong in a when the opponent comes into his territory uh, for the pass. So instead we're going to put him, and he played most of the time, He's gonna we're going to play him as the run, safe, and blitz defenses. And you kind of go the same. That's, sometimes you get these, you get players like Derek Morgan, where he is an outside linebacker, but on pass downs, he moves into the defensive end. 
Now, what he has here is he, he played about three quarters of the time, so I'm going to use him as a run specialist because he's an, a linebacker, and I'm going to use him safe. So that's actually going to bring him up. That's probably more like six. Well, that's actually probably 50%. Safe is probably 35 to 40%. Of your calls I would say pass is gonna be 30 to 35 you're gonna have fewer blitzes and you're gonna have a little bit you're gonna have fewer run calls as well so but that's the way I'm gonna have Derek Morgan be the run and the safe and then Morgan would be pass he would end up being more of an additional linebacker playing on the line maybe as a down lineman but he's you know that's that's the way defenses work on a pass down they would then Instead of having uh, a Daquan Jones as a defensive end, they're going to have Morgan as the defensive end, and they're going to use Bryce McCain as a uh, another pat like a, a dime defender, maybe even. Because um, as you can see here, you've got Antoine Blake, Damian Stafford, and Bryce McCain all as line. So that's really more of a quarter defense. You've got seven defensive backs who are going to come out here on a pass play. To, and some somewhat effective in some cases, maybe not, but um, that's the way it's going to work. And so this is the way I split it up. Your, your defensive lineman is going to be a little bit tougher because you know you just have to kind of do this the best you can and try to. I try to get the percentages as close as I can to being accurate as physically possible. Um, you're going to have injuries that potentially come up, and that's going to kind of skew things. If an injury comes up, I tend to try to funnel those plays to one of the other guys so like if it's a pass i'm gonna i might like let's say brian uh, let's say carl klug gets hurt i would move the safe probably to jarell casey because he's more of the starter at the defensive uh tackle position or defensive end or whatever so that's the way it goes i could show you it's chicago it's the same kind of thing um but that's pretty much the way that i set up my teams um as far as well it's not, not the end of the game. I, I kind of forgot. So I'm going to go and show you one other thing here. Um, and then I, I think what I'll do is I'll upload this as sort of like the preparation. And then we'll do some game footage another time. So let's, let's, um, let's get in here and let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so this is this is the way that I work my, and I, I may have to do this a couple times. So, <laughs> so I put Tennessee. It's going to be week eight, and I, I put the week of the game I'm playing. So week eight, uh, offensive formations. So I put across the top here. I put end A, S B, F B. EC and EB. So the these are the two ends. Yeah, you can't see it. Let me move it over uh, just a touch here. Okay, I think we're okay there. So you got your your two wide receivers most of the time. Then you've got the, the, the main tight end is EC. You got SB, which is sort of that can be fullback, can be tight end, can be wide receiver, and then you've got your running back at FB most of the time. Then down through here, I put one, two, three, four, five, six. Short yardage, long yardage. Okay. And I don't do this for the defense because I've already kind of set them up with run safe pass blitz up there. Um, so what I do is I take the guys that are constant. And so Murray, he's going to be the... the the FB for all of the formations. So I'm just going to go ahead and put him in there just like that. Nothing to really worry too much about with him. The ones that's really going to be the problem is going to be the SB. Now, Delaney Walker, he got, goes five out of the six. And he's also going to play on passing down. So let's just put Walker here. I'm going to put Supernaw in the sixth. And 
I'm going to put Walker here as well. I, I could use the same kind of range thing for this, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. So then I'll put Walker as the rest. Like so. Okay. You got the same thing with Sharp. Now what I try to do is I try to vary things a little bit when it comes to the other positions to try and make sure that... Um, well, first off, what you got to make sure is that you don't have the same player showing up twice in the formations. So that's kind of a, a tough thing to, to, it's not tough, but you just have to be mindful of it. Another thing you can do that you can kind of start with is your long yardage and your short yardage. Cause you know, Richard Matthews, Tajay Sharp, Delaney Walker, and then Kendall Wright are going to be in on long yardage, right? So short yardage, um, we're going to choose Fasano out here. In place of Sharp, we're going to choose Jalston Fowler at the SB position, and we will stick with Matthews. And the reason you do that is because you don't have you don't have a one run there in end day, so there that position is going to potentially factor into a, a run or two, maybe we'll see. All right, so then we've got to just figure out the rest of these. Um, and what do I like to do? Uh, I like to try and make sure that I only have a change up in one position if possible. So, and but we do have Super Naw here, so he can't be there. So what we're going to do is, since this is going to be more of a run-based, we're going to look at this as more of a run. We're going to put, but we will put Sharp here. Because we we're gonna use Fasano somewhere else. He can't. You're gonna use him here, and then Matthews. So you still have some pass opportunity there. Okay. Um. Then what we'll do is we will we'll we'll drop Fasano here into number five, and that allows us to put Sharp in the rest of these. Okay. Move, it's getting moved out of the way a little bit. So now what we need to do is we need to find where Andre Johnson is going to slot in. So let's let's do let's put him as these two right here. And we'll put Matthews just like this. And so I could have done the ranges here. You know, that's it. when you're trying to bring these things together, it's, it can be tough at times. So now we've got Kendall Wright. We need three of him and one of Fowler. A lot of times teams will use the fullback in their starting set. So I'll put Fowler up here just to start. And then we will use... Um, and who else? We've we got to get Superna in here. Let's use Superna along with Fasano. Another kind of run based. And then we'll just use right here for the remainder of those. And so, you know, it's it's kind of fudging it along here a little bit. It's there's no it's not like a tried and true method other than just I want to try and get my percentages right and have formations that makes some level of sense as far as how the team would use them. And I think this is pretty good for this. So I would do the same thing for Chicago. Um, and, and once that's done, then we're pretty much ready to play. So, uh, okay. And just for the sake of being complete here, I'm going to show you the card for Chicago and, as you can see here, uh, it was a lot less uh, variability for the Bears. Uh, you had Meredith, Jeffrey, and Zach Miller who played over 90% of their snaps in this game. Um, and then you had Jordan Howard playing over 80%, so he's going to get five. And Kadeem Carey is sort of his spell guy, and so he gets to, he's going to have one. Uh, and so you can see here, you get him at six. And uh, then the only position that really varied much was the NC, which is the tight end. Sorry, I just bumped the camera. 
So Paulson was four, and then you get Bellamy and Thompson. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use Bellamy twice because uh, we're going to use him in a pass play. And uh, I can mark him down here at zero plus and a one. Or no, and a zero for the run. But he would come in handy down further in the field. And you get Deontay Thompson as well for one play at four. But I you see I try to keep Paulson in there when carries in just to try and give him a little bit better chance of uh, being able to run. So Tennessee is currently in the lead five and one Chicago right near the bottom with Buffalo at two and five. So we'll see if Tennessee can continue to uh, play well. So let's just kind of keep moving along here with how we're going to play this game. And, um, you know, it's, I would, I would consider it to be on the intense side of things, but I, I'm also the kind of person that finds intense games to be, uh, enjoyable there's some there there are there are some uh common results but they also the thing that play who makes second season tends to do is they tend to put some uh, puts a lot of stock in sort of the rare play thing as opposed to stratomatic who tends to not do as much you know the rare plays can be a little bit uh, repetitive and um, I have recently had some some rare plays in second season that have been pretty interesting in their own right so um, just to let's get into the game and what we're going to do here um, the, the, the mechanism for the game for the most part is a black and a white die uh, you you actually get the smaller version of these with the game i like using the big version just so uh, when i roll it on camera here it's more visible for you guys um it's always red black first white second um so you get 11 12 13 40 50 16 up through 61 62 yada yada up to 66. um so what are these other dice that I have down here that you see? So we have, I use a decider die. The decider die comes in handy. Um, certain cases, such as interceptions, they usually give you two options. Who it could be, and if it's dot, it's the first one for me, and if it's not, then it's the second option as far as which player gets the interception. Um, we have this green die. What I use this for is my formation. So... If it's first and 10 and I roll this guy and it comes up a two, which you did went off camera for you, but it, well, it is a two. Then I, when I do my checks, I'm going to look at the player. So if it's like end day from formation two, if I look at my card for Tennessee, it's Richard Matthews. So that's going to help me, me make decisions as far as which um, player is going to get checked for, for whether they are the right, they meet the condition or not uh, in in the game checks. So there's that. Um, so you've got these two, and then you got the black D20. The black D20 is the play calling for the defense. So what we're going to do, and I'll show you here when we get into the game. Um, well, but so I do this for play calling defense, and then I use this for... Um, I, I've gotten to the point where I use this for the Q results um so basically what that means is that if if you need an alternate receiver because in the game there are results where they're going to make you look for an alternate receiver i go by this as far and i look at there's some ranges down here at the bottom so if it's like a medium pass i'll look at four and it's delaney walker who will be the one who gets is the receiver whereas you know during the game you might choose a different intended receiver so um so first off, let's just go ahead and kind of like get started into the game. I didn't really write up the sheet here. It's Tennessee at Chicago. I like to start by rolling these two guys. The black die is the is the uh, the away team, and whichever one is higher ends up winning the toss. And so in this case, that's a white two. 
probably need to move my camera a little bit. White to black five, so the away team wins the toss. And so in the modern NFL, the way that usually works is the team winning the toss defers, and that means they will kick off the first half because we don't really have... Um, well, we do have some weather effects here we could do, and this is going to be October weather, and we're doing this in the north, we'll say the north, and it's not gonna, there's not going to be any weather. So we don't have to worry about, you know, maybe if it were windy, you would think they might decide to take the wind to finish the game with the wind, um, but so Tennessee wins, they're going to kick. So first quarter, I use plain paper for my sheet. So we're going to do, it's, I, I put down the time here, 15 minutes. It's going to be a Tennessee kickoff, and it will be Ryan Suckup, who was their kicker back in 2016. Uh, so... Uh, we have a bunch of charts that this game has, um, board game boards, and so this one has your kickoffs. It has all this this particular chart has all your uh, kicking game, and so he is a kickoff triple A. And what you do is you go to thirteen, and it says it's seventy to the primary receiver. Now seventy, uh, the the kickoff starts at the thirty five of the kicking team, and so it's sixty five yards. To the goal line, that'd be five yards deep. But then, because he's AAA, you add 12 yards to it. That's going to make it out of the end zone for a touchback. So I'm, I write that down here: out of end zone, touchback. Okay, so it's going to be Chicago's ball first. No time off the clock. First and ten from the 25. Okay, so this is where. We get into the meat and of the game. So you're going to roll. I'm going to roll all of these dice at one time. The black and the white die become the play call. We use a... I use the second season replay chart. It's the replay games chart that they have here. So that's why I use... I use the black and the white d6s to come up with the play right here and and across the top here you've got situations first and 10 to 19 second and 1 to 10 yada yada and then the d the d20 that is black will then be the defensive call right down here and the other thing that you're going to want to do in terms of the way i feel things is that i, I want to take the tendencies of each team. So down here at this, in the bottom. So for Tennessee, their offense is considered minus one in the play calling department, and Chicago's defense is plus run. So they're a neutral zero. So no change there for Chicago. They're a minus three, and minus two for Tennessee. So this is going to be a minus four for Chicago in terms of play calling. So they're going to. They're gonna, the play call is going to be a little bit on the heavy pass side, okay? And then we're going to roll. I'm going to roll this and just have the, the gray one off to the side. The green is going to determine the formation. Again, that will go off to the side, and I'm going to have this as well. So we're going to roll all these. Unless it's going to play up here. And I'm using a, a, a cup that's from a board game that I have. So, um, again, Tennessee is a zero. Or no, it's Chicago. Chicago is a minus four. So we got 12. You go to the play calling chart. A 12 for a minus four team. For a minus three and a minus four team is a short pass call. And then we've got 18 on the D20, which is a blitz so it's going to be a short pass trying to beat the blitz so we take our game book right here and all of the the charts are arranged for the play calls in terms of the runs are up are closer to the front 
and then the deep pass is sort of the one toward the back of that section. And for each one, the, like the inside run, it goes pat against the pass, against the safe, against the run, and then against the blitz. So we're going to go up for short pass versus blitz, which is right after the run. It's right there. Open it to that. We see it is uh, formation six. Formation six is going to be well, Carey would be the, 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 the running back. You have Paulson, Jeffrey, Meredith, Miller. Uh, what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to choose a target. I'm, what we have here is we're going to have we have this gray D20 that's going to sit off to the side that will also kind of like help us a little bit in choosing that as well. Um, or that's going to be sort of our alternate receiver. But what we're going to do is we're going to choose, I'm going to choose Cameron Meredith. It doesn't, Sometimes you might want to choose a guy based on his R rating. So the R rating, um, I guess maybe I should do this before we get too far. Um, you have R ratings, which are their kind of, it kind of brings into sort of like their routine catches. Um, some guys have a star. Some guys have two stars. A star means you can get four catches a game. No star means two catches a game in the R well, when, when it's an R catch, okay? Um, so, like, Josh Bellamy is a 15. Kevin White's not going to be used in this game unless there's an injury. Um, you also have these ratings that I've shown you before that are the pass and run ratings. Um, and that's dependent on the play. If it's a run play, you'll look at the run rating if the guy is to be analyzed. And that the book will tell you. The other numbers that you would want to be uh, oh, so let me just continue with the R. So the R is based on number of catches, the usage limit. So if you hit Cameron Meredith with four passes, regardless of whether there are passes or not, he cannot catch another R ball after that. I like to take a black dry erase marker since I've got sort of a, um, a sheet protector here, and I just cross that off so I, I know that in the future... He can't catch any more R balls. It will influence whether I'm going to choose him as a primary receiver on that route because if he can't catch an R ball, then it's not worth really calling him unless everybody else has pretty much been used. So just a few other little um, tidbits. So you have a quarterback. So Jay Cutler is an A completion percentage. So these are at the top of each page in terms of the pass and the run, it's based off of the, the we'll say, sort of the, the ratings of the runner based on the play itself. So um, for a passing, Jay Cutler will be A. So there's a there's columns at the top for that are, and it's about the first seven or eight or nine um, selections. So it's 11 through like 21 usually are based off of these letter grades. And so Cutler's an A. Some guys are quad A, some guys are triple A, and that kind of helps determine their completion percentage in the long run. You get X, which is their propensity to throw a touchdown. Uh, if you end up on the, um, the X columns, so if you go to the, the, the fa facing page, so, well, some results will get you to the facing page, which are going to be your longer plays, um, chances for longer plays. Sometimes you'll get a role that asks, is X greater than whatever the number is? And if that's the case, then you get a chance at a really big play. It's partly touchdown, partly big play for these guys. Are, are they? Do they throw a lot of big plays? Why is the interception rating? The lower the number, the better. If it's a high number, like 7, um, you're going to get a lot more interceptions with a guy like Matt Barkley than you get Jay Cutler now. Uh, if you go over here to uh, Marcus Mariota, he's a two. He's not going to get too many interceptions. You get Q, which is that sort of um, check down play. And so that you, th that's a yardage, 13. And you're going to probably get sort of a modifier. Usually it's a die roll or whatever that you either add or subtract from it on a Q. And, you, and in that case, you would select an alternate receiver. And then OU, we can talk about this because we'll go down here to the running back real quick and talk about their ratings. I know it might be tough to see. You get an inside and outside and an R for the running backs. 
for the SBs as well, you'll get some if they can run. For the running backs, you get an inside rating. So that's for the inside run. Um, you get a rating for outside run plays. Uh, the star for a running back is 20 carries. Two stars is they can they can run for 40 times without any effect on these two ratings here. Most guys are going to be no. They're not going to have a star, which means 10 carries before this gets adjusted. And the way it gets adjusted is you subtract two letter grades or C, whichever is worse. So in case of Jordan Howard, let's say he gets 20 carries, and so he's going to get a, an inside run for his 21st carry. You would take triple A and you subtract two. It's going to bring him down to A. But because C is lower, he would just become a, a C inside runner after 20. Uh, an outside run for him at, at 21, it would go from B to D, and it would stay D. It would not be C because D is lower than, than B. And that's kind of the way that works. Um, you also have, like these guys here that have the parentheses, try to keep them under five carries, maybe even under <laughs> two carries for the most part, if you can. So that's just the way, this, that's the way things work. And you also um, might as well mention it here now you get some other little notes here and here about the offense and the defense. Brian Hoyer isn't in the games. So we don't have to worry about him. Neither is Langford. Kadeem Carey is going to give an, get an outside run rating of B for his first three carries. So instead of the D that he gets here listed on the sheet, he gets a B for his first three carries if he's running outside. Okay, so let's see. So we're going to choose Cam Meredith. It's a short pass against the Blitz. So when we roll this, it's going to give us two numbers. It's going to give us a, a two-digit number. Let's roll. Okay, 64. Now, immediately we're going to end up in a what is called an unusual result. You get anything that totals 10 on these two dice will be an unusual result. So you have this page. You go to the flip side here, and you go to the unusual result. You get 11 and 12 that are rare plays. All the way down, the, the ones at the bottom tend to be potential fumbles or they would um, it, uh, potential hard hits which would knock a completion out. So we get 43. If you look at 43 here, it is incomplete. So it's an incompletion to Cam Meredith. But it's got a, this is one of the, the special things it's got. It's got a little uh, video reel symbol and a V3. So it means you've got to go to page 81 and v3 we re-roll these two dice and if it's so it's incomplete but if it's 54 or above then it actually gets overturned on a video replay and so we're shaking them up and at 66 so that means it is going to be a pass that is complete and in the rules it says since it's a screen or a short pass it's going to be half r so cam meredith's 14 it's going to be a reception for meredith for half R, which is seven. So it'll be a seven yard gain. All right, let's talk about timing real quick. This is sort of my cheat sheet. Uh, if you go to the Facebook page for the play um, group, play community, there there's a fact that you, an FAQ you can find there that has several different times. This is the timing that I use though. For regular situations, a runner, a completion that is inbounds, it'll be 35 seconds. A runner completion out of bounds will be 25 seconds unless you're under five minutes or under two minutes left in the first half or five minutes in the second half, then it would just completely stop. But if you go out of bounds on either a run or a completion, in most of the play, it's the clock stops for a brief period until they reset the ball and then the clock starts again. So that's why they give it sort of a 10 second window there to figure that it's going to take 10 seconds for it to restart. Anything that stops the clock, incompletion, a timeout, a penalty, a turnover, those plays are given 10 seconds. And then when you get to two minutes, if you're trying to play hurry up offense, it's a 25 second per play if you don't use a timeout. If you do use a timeout, it's still 10 seconds for, per play. And some people might use less than that. Probably seven is a little closer to realistic, but we use 10 just to try to kind of keep it easier 
for the calculations. If you're trying to like run out this the first half or the second half clock, you can go to the two minute offense and consume is a full 40 seconds so you would run it down to almost the the penalty flag for delay a game and that would be 40 and on punts and place kicks things like that it's five seconds so on my sheet here i've got 15 i'm going to subtract 35 because it's an, a completion in bounds so it'll be 14 25 left on the clock that'll be second and three from the 32 add seven yards 25 so they beat the blitz, and I'm gonna get my. I didn't use my cup. We'll, we'll go with the next play, 53. So if I look on this chart again, it's short pass for 53, and four is a safe defense. So they're gonna again try and complete a shorter pass, but this time against a defense, which is kind of a look-in defense, it's gonna try and. Um, do whatever whatever they sense is going to happen. So, again, it's going to be six. This time we're going to... Let's choose Zach Miller. The SB. Okay, so there's 56. So, 56. We, we You then... The way you use the book here, it's got four quarters for these from 22 down here on the short versus safe. So it's the first quarter, so we look down the first quarter column, we look for 56. It asks us to check I for the defense. So I is going to be right here. Okay? And since it's a safe defense, we know it's going to be Carl Klug who is going to be in the game for this. Is he zero pass? He is rated a one pass. So if he was rated zero, you go to yes. Because he's not, you go to Y quarterback pressured, unloads throw, go to Y chart. So... How does the Y chart work? This is where you look at Jay Cutler is a four. We can look here and see that um, if it's four or more, that's 26. If it's um, five or more, five, he's not a five. He's less than five. So you're going to re-roll the two D6s. And it's 55, so it is greater than 26. So he does not throw an interception he throws an incompletion and it's going to lead to third and three still from the 32 we subtract 10 14 15 for an incomplete pass so what now we go to there are some special charts here uh, as you get to third down you, you get some specific yardages so for for one to three yards you can use this column Four to six yards left on third or fourth down, you use this column. Seven to nine, 10 to 14, etc., etc. Um, lastly, there are some special ones over here, which gives you some indications how to use this based on the score and the timing. Uh, you can also use these at the end of the half. In theory, you could use them at any time if you wanted to try and be a little more progressive, but it may not line up with reality because it's going to tend to side you more towards either passing or running to extremes but now we're going to use that third and three column that gives us 36 on third and three which is an outside run and we're going to use the short yardage which is going to be uh, jordan howard and it's against a blitz 19 is blitz so we don't have to worry about the three because it's not a pass play this is jordan howard on a third and three and it's an 11 so we had our outside run versus blitz so it's an 11 he is rated a B outside runner you go 11 B you look here and it's 10 yards so he breaks one for 10 against the blitz gets past the the rush and uh, Howard gets a 10-yard gain. I mark over here for the first down just with a little R and a box around it. And so we go first and 10. Doesn't indicate it went out of bounds, so we're going to subtract uh, 35. That's going to take it down to 1340. And then we add 10. That's to the 42-yard line. 
So you can kind of see how this is going to move along here. You just keep running each play. Same kind of thing. We get a 41, which is a screen pass, and a 5, which is a safe defense. So now we're going to use formation 5. I like to use the running back for a lot of screens because that's where your screen usually goes. So 5 is Jordan Howard. And it's 34. So we look on the chart here in the first col first quarter column. It checks end A. So that's going to be the wide receiver over here. Cam Meredith is always going to be the end A. And you look at your chart. I put my charts up here for the uh, my formations. He's always end A. Is he a zero pass? If you can see it here, he is actually a one pass in all situations. So no. If you go to the no column. Cuts inside after catch, gain of eight yards. And now it's not Meredith that did, it is Jordan Howard that did. He kind of did one of those little uh, out and in routes, and he gets eight. So it's going to be a second and two from the 50. Subtract 35, the 1305. do this again. Uh, 55 is short against a blitz. Getting another, getting some heavy blitz in here from the Titans. And we were getting some bias here towards the sixth formation so far. But um, let's, let's target Alshon Jeffrey this time. 33 S is NC, which for it's going to be Logan Paulson. Is he a two pass? Logan Paulson is not. So we go to the no column, shoved out of bounds after catch, half R. So again, so this is Jeffrey who made the catch. He is an R of 16. Half of that is eight. Out of bounds, but that is a first down on a second and two. So that's a passing first down. I write a P, circle around it, or square around it. Down at 12, 30. First and 10, down to the Tennessee 42. So you can see here, uh, Cutler and the Bears are on the move. Now 14 is going to be an inside run. We haven't had too many runs here so far. And because it's formation one, it'll be Jordan Howard. And against 12, that's going to be a... So this, normally it's run, but against a minus three and a minus four against heavy passing... They're going to tend towards a safe defense in this case. So inside against safe, and it'll be Jordan Howard on the run. Shake this guy up. 45. Says his quarterback a run two. Cutler is a run one. So nope. So it'll be smothered at the line for a one-yard loss for Howard. So that will be... Um, Oh, actually, I messed up my timing after I told you about the out-of-bounds. 13.05, and he went out-of-bounds, so we subtract 25. So 12.35, and then you get 35. Oh, this would be 12 minutes. Second and 11 from the 43 of Tennessee. So, second and 11, we go to that second column on the play chart. That's second and 11 plus. So, 55 is going to be a medium pass against a pass defense. So, it's going to be strength against strength, if you will. Or, uh, you know, defensive strength is going to match up. And we're going to go to long yardage offense. Let's try throwing this to Bellamy. And it's a 46. And actually, this knocked its. This was an 8 before, I believe. So 46 means unusual result. Go to that chart. 12. Rare play. So we go to page 73, which is the rare results for medium passes. And let's see. What the dice 
bring a 63. Quarterback stumbles, escaping the pass rush. Throws pass from seated position, complete to fullback for 11 yard or to FB. So FB in that case is Howard. So pass is complete to Jordan Howard. For, from the seated position for 11 yards. And if that will be a first down. It gets just enough. 11.25, first and 10 from the 32. Sometimes those rare plays will go for touchdowns. Sometimes the defense will end up with a touchdown. Sometimes it will just be something like that. Sometimes it will just be something like uh, Coach Burns a timeout or something like that, you know? So 50, uh, 51 is going to be short pass against 11, which is safe. Formation 1. And I'm going to try and get this these guys out of the way a little bit so I don't knock it over again like I did before. All right, so short against safe. And with one, let's try to get one to, another one to merit here. 45 is tackle B who is uh, Bobby Massey, is he a zero pass? He is a one pass. Now, if this were a run play, he's one minus. And since we're on Tennessee's side, if it were a run play, he would actually be a zero. But in this case, tackle B is a one, so he's not a zero pass. Completed under pressure, half our yards. So pass to Meredith, half R. So it's going to be seven because he's a 14. That's his second seven-yard completion. So it's down to 10, 50, second and three from the 25-yard line. Jay Cutler currently five for six through the air. Good start for him. 61 is going to be a medium pass against a safe defense. Medium pass tends to create sort of those 10 to 25 yard completions. If they work, we'll throw it to Miller this time. 42, NB2 pass. NB is going to be Alshon Jeffrey. He's a one pass, not a two. So he drops the pass, and Cam Meredith does not have an explanation mark. Okay, so here's. This is an advanced option. I use it, and it's not going to work in this case, but it does depend on... Oh, wait, you know what? We were talking... This was Zach Miller, not Cam Meredith. I, I made a mistake. You got. This is one of the things you got to keep in mind, is you want to remember who you... It's a 42. NB, two pass. He's not. So pass, drop, incomplete. But you've got... Sometimes you've got these little notations like this, it's an exclamation mark or a question mark. This is an exclamation mark in brackets. What that means is, if you look here at Chicago's team sheet, you know, I said Miller before I started the play. He has an exclamation mark next to his name, which means that instead of that being incomplete, that is going to be a complete pass to Zach Miller for um... If you look in the book, it's uh, a medium pass would be, I believe, R yardage. Um, I should have this written down somewhere that I can have real quick. Um, exceptional receivers, half R for short and screen, R for medium, 2R for long. So Miller catches it for 10, which will be another first down. So Chicago... Having a great opening drive here, down to 10, 15, first and 10 from the 15-yard line. Really clicking on all cylinders here. Sixteen's an inside run, 1-6 against a blitz. Now, blitzes can be good against inside runs, they can also, if in some cases, they will break. It's going to be Jordan Howard again. Running this one. Inside versus blitz. 
to kind of feast your family with the blitz defense. 13. So he, uh, Jordan Howard is a triple A, and then you got 13, so it's going to be a six yard gain. If it had been 15 up to 23, it would have been an XR play, but that's going to be a run on a 13 for six yards. Takes it down to the nine. It's going to be second and four. 9.40. 62. So, okay. some A little bit of change here. If you get inside the 20, the opposing team's 20, the long pass should be brought down to a medium. If you get inside the 10, long and medium passes should be brought down to short passes. So 62 indicates a medium pass on the on the play chart. Instead, we're going to bring that down to a short. So it's going to be a short pass against a safe defense. Now, some people might play, you could play sort of the specialized yardage for like the third, but we're I'm not going to do that here. You could maybe go with a little bit more of a conservative defense. So short against safe. It's, it's uh, chart four. Or, uh, so we're going to go with Deontay Thompson this time. See if we can get him a completion here. And 55 is an unusual result. 31. Nine yards out of bounds. But there's... So what you'll get in some plays is you'll get um, this uh, little hand with a finger pointing next to it. You'll even get it on the other page. That means that there's going to be a penalty as well. So it's nine yards... Completed the Thompson, but let's see what the penalty does. And we roll this out before I write anything down as well, because if it's, you can get a false start. It's 64, though, so it's going to be defense. 64 is 8A, which is, a, I believe, a hold. You can look on the penalty chart on page 2. There's also one of the boards above. 8A is holding. It's 5 yards from the end of the run and first down. So what, what do we have on the play? We had nine yards out of bounds, but a hold. Well, guess what? That means, because we were on the nine, I always play that you only need the amount of yards for what the yard is. So if it's nine, if you're on the nine yard line, you only will need nine yards to get into the end zone. So this is a pass to Bellamy, remember, for nine we're going to say penalty declined, and that is a touchdown for the Bears. So 9.30 left in the first quarter, touchdown. I always tend to write all this stuff down here because I'm kind of a... I have my ways. I do Bellamy, just like you would see in the, uh, the box score on Monday morning in your paper. Bellamy, 9 pass from Cutler. And then, so, the way the point after works, you look at Connor Barth, he is a, the XP rating is double A. So, again, this board here is really simple. You get the first half plus one are all good. And then, based on the letter rating, you get a couple who, you can, it continues to grow as far as others who get to make the point after. And you can also get the unusual result. In this case, it's 66. So it is no good. So the kick failed. So that makes it Chicago 6. Tennessee, zero. Okay, so I've done one drive with this. You kind of get, hopefully get a feel, a little bit of a feel for the rhythm of the game. I'm going to come back another time and do a little bit more of this game play through, probably up through halftime. So, um... 
I just kind of want to break this up into certain segments. So if you like this and you want to see more second season, hit the like button, uh, leave a comment. Um, I, I haven't really showed you too much about the returns, but it's pretty similar. You just use these boards, but we'll, we'll talk some more about that next time because I want to try and keep this into uh, segments that are viewable for all. You know, it's uh, th th this game tends to be a little bit longer than baseball. Baseball, you can get into half an hour to an hour. This a, a football game takes maybe two and a half, three hours if you're rolling the dice and everything. So uh, we'll see you very soon for some more of this Tennessee at Chicago. Chicago has the lead 6 nothing early on, uh, 9.30 left in the game. See you next time here on Tabletop Baseball Plus.